this is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, drama, and romance film called Blast from the Past. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. One evening, a group of friends attends a dinner party, though they caution against mentioning the communists as it may trigger their host, an inventor named Dr. Calvin Weber. Suddenly, a guest directs everyone's attention to President Kennedy's report about missile sites heading to Cuba. Meanwhile, a jet flies over Los Angeles, but the pilot loses control of the aircraft. Given the news, Calvin decides to end his dinner party abruptly. With the guests gone, Calvin hurries his pregnant wife, Helen, into his workshop. Hearing the radio transmitter declaring an emergency, the inventor believes that it's time to head inside his hidden fallout shelter. Unknown to him, the emergency transmission he's receiving is the jet pilot asking for help to land his aircraft safely. He aims to have the jet fall into the ocean, but it diverts from its path as soon as a pilot ejects himself. The couple enters a shelter just as a jet falls into their house, causing massive explosions. They hear the locks activate, which Calvin programmed to keep them inside in case of an atomic blast. The locks will last for 35 years until the radiation has cleared up and it's safe to go to the surface. In the morning, officers search their ruined house, but assume that the Webbers were out when the jet fell. They find that the workshop is completely obliterated, unaware that the couple is several feet below them. Helen wakes up to find Calvin making breakfast. He checks on her, encouraging her to be strong for their child. Still, Helen mourns over friends and family, whom she believes died in the blast. He tries to comfort her by pointing out that he built their shelter to look like their home, but this doesn't work. Suddenly, Helen goes into labor, so Calvin hurries to help her. After their baby is born, Helen names their son Adam. Over the next few weeks, Calvin does what he can to give his family any comfort he can give. However, the images on their television are mirrored, so they end up watching sitcoms that way. The family continues to spend months in the fallout shelter as normally as they can, even setting up their pantry to look like a grocery store for Helen to shop in. One day, Calvin tries to fix the rear exit where the elevator is, since the entrance where they came in before was caved in during the blast. Above him, construction for a new diner is being done. Diggers discover the shelter's hatch but mistake it for a septic tank, so they just build the foundation over it. Years later, Calvin teaches a young Adam how to read. When Adam wonders if he'll ever go to the surface, his father promises that he will, even urging him to find a partner and rebuild America. This worries Helen since she's not convinced that it's possible, but Calvin remains optimistic. Meanwhile, the diner opens above them, owned by mom, while her son, Melker, helps out. Despite having everything they need, the isolation gets to Helen, so she starts drinking excessively. The parents also spend time with their son, as Calvin teaches him boxing while Helen teaches him to dance. With Adam growing up, Calvin reveals that he bought stocks for him before the war. He insists that they're worthless now, but Adam still asks to keep them. Calvin also gives Adam his baseball card collection. Since his son doesn't know about the sport, he tries to explain it to him but struggles to. Over a decade later, the diner above them turns into a punk club, but is run by the same mother and son. Thinking that the neighborhood is going to hell, mom decides to sell the place, but Melker insists on taking over instead. An adult Adam celebrates his birthday with his parents. After he blows out the candles, Helen asks what Adam wished for, so he admits to wishing that he'd meet a girl. Calvin notes that they'll be able to go to the surface in two years, so he's hopeful that Adam will meet someone. He admits that he'd miss the place when they go up, but Helen excuses herself and goes into a different room to scream, having grown tired of the shelter. Two years later, the doors finally unlock, so Calvin opens the door for the first time in 35 years, and they celebrate. However, he urges them to wait for the night to be safe. This makes Helen curse, but they tell their naive son that the word is French for good. That evening, Melker gets drunk at his rundown club, when the ground starts shaking and the floor opens up. From there, Calvin, wearing a hazmat suit, appears, and Melker collapses due to shock. Calvin then heads out, discovering how his old home has turned into a junkyard. Scared, he runs off and starts removing his hazmat suit. A lady of the night sees him and offers her services, adding that she can be whatever he wants her to be. Calvin politely declines and continues on his way, only to get scared off by a gang playing with toy guns. He hides in the nearest establishment, which ends up being a mature video store. Soon, he returns to his family and declares that the survivors have become mutants that can change form, mistaking the lady's claims from earlier. He adds that society has collapsed and people are waving guns around, so he's convinced that it's better to stay in the shelter. 
However, Helen finally unleashes all her pent-up woes about their isolation. The parents get into an argument, and Calvin ends up suffering a heart attack. After getting Calvin to rest, Helen tells her son that they need supplies. Adam volunteers to go, so his mother gives him instructions, telling him to check into the Holiday Inn if he has to spend the night. Adam wonders if he can meet a girl from the surface, and Helen encourages him to. As he prepares, Adam packs a suitcase, adding the stock certificates and baseball cards to his luggage. Before he leaves, Calvin tells him to stay away from adult stores, lying that there's poison gas inside. On the surface, Melker has turned to religion after what he witnessed, only to be surprised again by the hatch opening. Adam appears, and Melker asks for forgiveness, thinking he's a god. Adam assures him that things will get better, so the man continues praying. Finally, Adam steps out and sees the sky for the first time in his life. When passersby wonder what he's looking at, they worriedly check if there's something in the sky. When he passes by the adult video store, he panics and starts warning people about the poisonous gas. Later, Adam nervously rides the bus to a grocery store. When he tells a meat vendor everything he has to buy, the man advises him to order everything to be delivered to his home. This makes Adam realize that he doesn't know where home is, so he hurries away. He rides the bus until evening, desperately looking for a familiar area to return home. Soon, he finds another adult video store, but it's different from the one near the shelter. Next to it is a hobby shop, so Adam tries to sell his cards in exchange for smaller bills to pay for public transportation. As he talks to the store owner, an employee named Eve walks in, overhearing that the owner is offering Adam merely $500 for the entire collection. She points out that one of his cards alone is already worth $6,000, surprising Adam. This annoys the owner, so he fires Eve, which she happily accepts since she's quitting anyway. After they leave, Eve learns that Adam is lost, so she thinks he's a tourist who's new to Hollywood. She guesses that he's staying at the Holiday Inn, making him think she's a psychic since it's where his mother told him to stay. When he assures her that he doesn't have a gun, however, he scares her off. To convince her to help, Adam offers to give her a baseball card worth $4,000. Taking the bribe, Eve gives him a ride to the Holiday Inn but leaves as soon as he exits her car. The following day, Eve hurries back to the hotel and meets with Adam in the lobby. Much to her annoyance, she can't take a $4,000 baseball card for just a drive to the hotel, so she gives it back. Thinking that he's interested in her, Eve warns him that relationships never work with her. He asks why Eve's relationships never work, so she confesses that it's because she always falls for shallow guys. She then walks off to find another job, so Adam offers her one. He tells her he needs help to sell the baseball cards and buy supplies. Eve thinks he's buying supplies for the poor and accepts the job. With her help, Adam is able to buy supplies for his shelter, though Eve continues being cold to him. The following day, they transfer the supplies into a storage unit. Adam thanks Eve, saying he would have been lost without her. Knowing that he's about to hint at a relationship, Eve stops him. While driving, Adam also asks Eve to find a wife for him because he doesn't want to be alone. Eve tells him that marriage is awful, given that her parents and brothers are divorced. Soon, Eve tries to teach him how to drive but gets pissed when he drives recklessly. They stop by her house, where they find her ex-boyfriend Cliff getting his belongings. Seeing her with Adam, he shares that he's dating a model to make Eve jealous. That evening, Adam marvels at the items in Eve's house while she and her roommate, Troy, prepare dinner. Learning about Adam's purchases, Troy thinks that he's preparing a self-sustaining island or a cult. When Troy asks where he's from, Adam dares Eve to guess, thinking that she's a psychic. Eve takes on the challenge and reads his palm, declaring that he's from a remote area in Alaska, hence why he's collecting supplies. Adam doesn't deny this, so Troy assumes she's right. Meanwhile, Helen makes sure that her husband is asleep before going to the surface to check on Adam. To her surprise, she finds Melker and his followers, who start praising her. Freaked out by this, Helen returns to the shelter. The next day, Troy takes Adam shopping, allowing him to buy roller skates. They take him to the park to try them out, and Adam skates to the beach, where he sees the ocean for the first time. Removing his roller skates, he heads into the water and splashes around while Eve and Troy watch. As days go by, Adam and Troy become friends while Eve continues helping him out. Adam also watches a baseball game for the first time, finally understanding how the game works. One afternoon, Eve asks if he's still set on finding a wife, and Adam says yes. He calls her his best friend and hugs her, which makes her conflicted about her feelings. That evening, they go to a club where they meet Eve's acquaintance, Sophie. When she curses, Adam mistakes this as French, so he starts speaking in the language, impressing her. 
Jealous, Eve pulls Adam away, advising him not to choose Sophie. While drinking, Troy advises Adam to aim for a sweet girl, so he points him to a blonde woman. They urge him to talk to her, so Adam goes alone. To Troy and Eve's surprise, Adam makes her laugh, even getting her to introduce him to her friend. The trio ends up dancing together, dominating the dance floor. The crowd cheers for them, but Eve becomes jealous and calls Adam back. Upon Eve's insistence, Troy heads to the bathroom to give them privacy. She confronts Adam about his dance skills, accusing him of lying about Alaska and the poor people he's helping. She demands him to stop lying, so Adam starts to confess. However, Cliff interrupts him and invites Eve for a drink. Wanting to make Adam jealous too, she goes with her ex-boyfriend. But Adam intervenes and starts ridiculing Cliff to remind Eve how awful he was to her. Offended, Cliff throws a punch, but Adam easily blocks it and hits him in the face. Unamused by his behavior, Eve declares that she quits her job and storms off. When Troy returns home later that evening, Eve asks where Adam is, and he hints that he went home with someone else. Troy teases her for falling in love with Adam, which she vehemently denies. He assures Eve that Adam didn't go with the ladies he danced with. Instead, however, he went with Sophie, which freaks Eve out as she hates her. She decides to barge into Sophie's house, but before she can drive away, Adam knocks on her car window, making her jump out and trip. Pissed off, Eve rushes back into the house, and Adam is guilty of scaring her. When Adam worries that everything he does gets her mad, Troy tells him that it's because he's a nice boy, but Eve needs a nice man. Hearing this, Adam becomes more assertive as he treats Eve's wound. Still hung up on Sophie, she asks if he went to her place. Adam admits that he did, but realized he'd rather be with Eve, so he took a taxi there. He sings a song about a man who's overjoyed just being at the house of the person he loves, and this enamors Eve into kissing Adam. As they kiss, Eve asks if he'd been intimate with someone before. Adam says no and decides to tell Eve the truth. He recounts that his family hid in the fallout shelter that his dad built when the bombs hit. He then invites her to the shelter, and Eve listens to this in silence. When he's done, she asks him to leave, and Adam happily agrees, considering that it's late at night. After he leaves, Eve cries. The next day, Troy accompanies Adam when he finally finds the adult video store near the shelter's elevator. While Melker and his followers ask for a sign at the old club, Adam walks in, surprising them. Soon, the two return to Eve's house and find that she has called Dr. Aaron from the Family Services Department. She invites him to their office to talk about his experience in the fallout shelter. Adam refuses since he's busy, but Eve encourages him to go. Hearing this, Adam reconsiders but tries to bargain about returning to the shelter first since he just found it again this morning. However, Dr. Aaron urges him to leave now, so they take him away. Once they're alone, Eve reasons to Troy that it was the right thing to do since Adam wanted to take her underground, which scared her. However, Adam runs away, so Dr. Aaron calls for police assistance. Eve stops her to protect Adam, realizing that he might have been telling the truth. Suddenly, Adam comes running to Eve, giving her his hotel key and telling her to keep his baseball card collection. He then hurries back to his truck and drives away. Finally, Adam returns to the shelter, bringing Melker with him. Melker's group has volunteered to bring the supplies down, but Adam warns that he's being chased by a psychiatrist. Eve and Troy head to the storage unit where Adam's supplies are but find that it's been emptied. They then head to his hotel room as Eve still hopes to find Adam and return his belongings to him. When Troy finds his stock certificates and toothpaste from the 1960s, this further convinces Eve that Adam was telling the truth. Remembering that Adam mentioned finding a shelter that day, Eve asks Troy where they went earlier. Troy recalls Adam getting excited about the adult video store, so they head to the place, thinking that the fallout shelter is there. After failing to find him, they drive away, only for Eve to see him getting out of a payphone booth after calling her house. Eve rushes out and hugs Adam, finally accepting him. Adam takes Eve to the shelter to introduce her to his parents. To their surprise, Adam instructs his parents to set the locks for two months so they can return, urging them to trust him. Over the next two months, Adam and Eve sell the stocks and baseball cards. With that money, they build a new house for his parents in the countryside and rebuild Melker's bar. Soon, they convince Helen and Calvin to return to the surface, and they marvel at how their son rebuilt their home in an idyllic place. Alone with his father, Adam finally reveals that there were no bombings that destroyed the country. Still, Calvin thinks it's only what everyone believes, and Adam just lets him ramble on with his theories. When Adam heads in to join his mother for dinner, Calvin stays outside. Eve watches him measure the land area as if plotting to build another fallout shelter. She smiles as she plays with her engagement ring, deciding not to spoil her new family's dreams. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. 
and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.